Hey, welcome back to Robot Cantina. First of all, I'd like to thank you for all the comments and suggestions you folks gave on the oil cooling video. It's great to have such an active audience. So it looks like we're going to be doing a few more experiments in the near future. Why? Because experiments are fun and there's always something to be learned. Now if you haven't seen the last video yet, or any of the other 25 videos, they're definitely worth watching. The premise of this video series is to get our little Honda Insight to go as fast as possible with the cement mixer engine. It sounds ridiculous, and it is, but someone has to do it. Now let's take a look at what we have in store for today. As most of you know, we're updating the ECU in our street legal race car with a Speedwino ECU. But what exactly is a Speedwino? Well, let's find out. Now the Speedwino NO2C that I chose for this project came from WTM Tronics right here in Michigan. Now just as a reminder, I'm not affiliated with any of the products I feature, and I paid full price for this kit. However, I will admit, since WTM Tronics is Michigan based, I went with them because, well, Michigan. And Kid Rock's also from Michigan, and who doesn't like Kid Rock? So this is the heart of any Speedwino EFI system, and it's an Arduino Mega Microcontroller. This micro has an 8-bit Atmel 2560 running at 16 MHz, and it has an enormous amount of input and output ports. These micros are very popular in the electronics community because they're inexpensive and they're easy to learn code on. Now this Mega was 15 bucks, and that's pretty cheap. Of course it's a clone, and because Arduino is open source, that's fine. Now a genuine Arduino Mega runs about 40 bucks. Anyway, the point is, all the complicated stuff is on this pre-built board, and the Speedwino board is merely a signal conditioning board with passive components. Anyway, WTM Tronics offers a full line of Speedwino ECUs, and you can get them pre-built or in kit form. Unfortunately, the NO2C is only offered in kit form, and that's fine. But if that's not how you roll, the UA4C is a little bit bigger and can be had pre-assembled. Plus, you can also get an enclosure for the UA4C. Now there are of course other Speedwinos out there, but those are the two that I looked into. So I went with the NO2C because I like how small it is. This ECU will work on one, two, and four cylinder engines, but I don't know if it'll work on a three cylinder. Anyway, this is the printed circuit board, and as you can see it's the same size as the Mega, and that's just too cool. Now as far as I can tell there is no assembly instructions for this circuit board, and they really aren't necessary. The board is clearly labeled and all you have to do is grab a part, read off the location on the bag, and plug the part into that location on the printed circuit board. For example, these capacitors go in locations C11 and C17. So all you do is locate the holes at C11 and C17, plug in the capacitors, solder it, and then clip off the leads. And there you go, there's the instructions. Now there are a few parts like this other capacitor that has to be installed a certain way, and that's because this capacitor is polarized. The capacitor's polarity is marked, and also the circuit board is marked, so that helps. Anyway, there's a Speedwino forum that can help if you get confused, or need help in some other way. So this is interesting. The Speedwino board has a map sensor built right in, and this one's rated for boost. Now I do get comments from time to time, and they go something like this. Jimbo, the EFI is too complicated, and it isn't worth the hassle. And yeah, I totally get that, but we have to look at the big picture, and that is, we're going to boost the engine with forced induction, and yeah, it can be done with a carburetor, but EFI is so much better. So this is the little supercharger we're going to use, and it's an AMR300, and that means it's a 300cc positive displacement roots type supercharger. The best part of this little supercharger is, it has its own oil supply, and that makes all the difference. Now previously we had planned on using a turbocharger to boost our 420cc engine, but we're actually trying to build something that would last longer than a few episodes, and the turbo presents too many problems. The primary issue is, the 420 engine doesn't have an oil pump, and this turbo needs oil. And yeah, I've seen other folks run electric oil pumps, but that's kind of sketchy at best, and we're not going down that road. But Jimbo, what about the oil pump you used on the oil cooler video? Nope, that definitely is not the right kind of oil pump. But keep in mind on the future 670cc V-twin build, that engine does have an oil pump. And guess what? We just might turbo it. So once again, let's look at the big picture. The supercharger needs EFI, and the supercharger is more likely to survive our shenanigans. So we're going to take the path of likely success. Alright, before we move on, I just want to reassure some of you folks what this channel is capable of. So, a few years ago before we started this channel, I built a Mazda Miata. An unusual Miata, to say the least. If you ever seen a Miata engine, you would instantly recognize that this isn't one of them. It's a completely custom built engine that uses Mazda, Ford, and Kia components. This engine gave the Miata a glorious amount of low end torque, and delivered 45 miles to the gallon in the daily drive. 
Now that's a true 45 miles to the gallon, and not one of those numbers folks will quote you if you drive a car a certain way. Anyway, the majority of the development that went into that engine was done on this, and that's a completely custom built engine tuning dyno, and yes, that was built in this very same garage. So is this project in good hands? I don't know, you decide. Yeah, we got this. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at some other parts we'll be using on the new EFI system. The Speedduino has more features that actually work, so we're going to start off with a 36 minus 1 crank trigger for the ignition system. Now, this may be overkill for a one cylinder engine, but it's the right thing to do. This trigger wheel will mount to the crankshaft in place of our single point trigger system. A high resolution trigger wheel like this guarantees precise ignition timing because the ECU doesn't have to guess if the engine has slowed down between crank trigger events. And that's actually really important when running boost. For the ignition system, we're going to go with a coil unplug system. This coil is from a Ford product and it's not known for its longevity, but they are common and you can get them at any store. Now being that it only has two wires means that it's going to require an igniter because this Beduino cannot directly trigger this due to the power demands. I guess there's all kinds of igniters available, but once again I went with something somewhat common. And this is an igniter, or sometimes known as an ignition control module. Anyway, this was made for an older General Motors high energy ignition system, so it should be able to handle the demands of our Ford coil. Let's see, Balkan Road. Yeah, where did they come up with these names? Now. For the ignition module, I picked up a nice looking aluminum enclosure because, well, I like to make stuff look nice, plus the module really ought to be mounted to something to dissipate the heat. The Speedduino NO4C doesn't have a suitable enclosure available unless you 3D print one, so I went with an ABS plastic enclosure because 3D printing enclosures always end up taking too much time. However, I'm not opposed to 3D printing a mounting base for the Arduino Mega, so let's do that. Alexa, 3D print an Arduino Mega mounting base. No, I work for Amazon. I kind of noticed my Echo Dot has picked up an attitude, and let's just say we had a talk, and it would be a shame if that power cord got disconnected. Wow, I can really get used to this modern technology. So here's what one looks like up close. Let's see if it fits. Not too bad. So, through the magic of editing, I went ahead and assembled the Speedduino. And how long did it take? Good question. Well, I queued up the latest episode of Vice Grip Garage, and I had the circuit board done before Derek had the 71 Buick rolling. So, if you have time to watch Vice Grip Garage or Putin's Fab Shop, then you have time to build one of these. So, let's see how this fits in the enclosure. Not too bad. I'll have to do some trimming, but it looks like it'll work just fine. So far we addressed most of the issues that we'll encounter when changing over to the Speedduino ECU. I think for now, we will probably retain a few items that came with the original EFI kit, like the fuel pump, the throttle position sensor, and the engine temperature sensor. Well, actually the fuel pump will stay for now, but we'll probably end up ditching it in the near future. Personally, I like the fuel pump, but it has an integral fuel pressure regulator that's referenced to the atmosphere, and that may cause tuning issues with the supercharger. I guess we should also do something about the fuel injector. Well, 
The fuel injector that came with the EFI kit flows at a ridiculous 300 cc per minute, but keep in mind the ECU can more or less keep the injector in line, but I think we really ought to do something about that. Unfortunately, the injector is also part of the throttle body, so that makes changing the injector a big problem. And the way it's set up, it ain't going to work with the supercharger. You see, the throttle body needs to be mounted before the supercharger, and the injector needs to be mounted after the supercharger. So in order to relocate the injector, I picked up this injector bung from Do-It-Yourself EFI. Now the idea is to leave the 300cc injector in place on the throttle body, but not use it. Basically, it's just going to fill a hole in the throttle body. And then we'll mount a new injector near the intake port on the engine. So this bung is made for an EV1 type injector, and there's plenty of options when it comes to EV1 injectors, so that'll make things a lot easier. The top of this gadget is threaded for a barbed nipple, and that will allow us to connect a high pressure fuel line directly to the injector. Of course, with such a major change to the electrical system, we're going to have to rewire some of it. You know, the cheapo EFI system was a disappointment, but the one thing it had going for it was it came pre-wired, and that goes a long way for some people. Now, I reckon some of the harness can be salvaged, but not all of it will be compatible with our new system. So this isn't my first rodeo, and I've found Deutsch-type connectors to be ideal for wiring EFI systems. Now, Deutsch stuff is expensive, but there appears to be a knockoff brand called JR Ready that's available at a reasonable price. The problem is, the crimping tool runs a little less than 200 bucks, and that's actually cheap when compared to a genuine Deutsch crimping tool like this one. Like I mentioned earlier, the NO2C board was easy to assemble, but I do have an electronics background, so keep that in mind. The capacitor C7 and C4 are these two gumdrop looking thingies. Now they're polarized, which means they're installed a certain way, and both the board and the capacitors are marked. There's plenty of resistor networks on this board, and they all have a line printed on them, and that line will match up with the square on the printed circuit board. Of course, all the diodes and ICs go in a certain way, and that's about it. It's easy peasy. Oh, and one more thing. I constantly get interrupted, and that's not really good when you're putting electronics together. So, everybody has a system, and if you don't, here's one you might want to try. Now, this bag had quite a few capacitors in it, and as I installed each capacitor, I put a little tick mark on the bag. Now, I know it seems simple, but trust me, it helps. So I could probably go on for hours, but I reckon I need to actually put all this stuff together and get our street legal go-kart back on the road again. So I guess it's time we wrap this up, and I'll see you next time.